Smack in the middle of East Hollywood looms one of Scientology's most iconic buildings, the aptly named Big Blue. It was here, in a gritty neighborhood nearby, that Leah Remini and her family came to live in the mid-1980s. After a disastrous tour of duty in Florida with Scientology's religious order, the Sea Org. There was a big Scientology community there, and we slept on someone's floor. We had nothing. Despite the fact that she thought her daughters had been threatened with overly harsh punishment for their misbehavior, Leah's mother, Vicky, did decide to keep the family deeply involved in Scientology. Why didn't you say to yourself, I don't want to be part of an organization that would put kids in this position? Never even thought about that. So you, you thought know, this I'm... was a failure of specific individuals, exactly not the Exactly right, exactly. Now in LA, Leah threw herself into the practice and study of Scientology, known as moving up the bridge to total freedom. What do you get as you move up the levels? Well, it promotes that you're getting to higher levels of, of awareness as a spiritual being. And these are the courses. Yeah, these are the courses and these are the Moving courses. up the bridge involves taking a series of courses and also participating in auditing, a sort of counseling that employs a device known as an e-meter. This is just a flow of energy that's coming from the meter through you back mm -hmm. to the meter. But once a, a, a thought comes in, that thought, that picture that you have, and is re that is met registering on the meter. Leah recently gave me a small taste of what she says an auditing session is like. You'd be asking me questions. I would ask you questions. And based on what's happening here, would I let you get away with it or not? You see what I'm saying? Through the questions, the answers, and the readings on the needles, the process promises to release your negative emotions. So this is a way for me to get rid of trauma that's dogging me psychologically. Right. Back in the mid-1980s, Leah says she was going through these types of sessions almost daily, which meant she had to earn money because moving up the bridge is not free. So you have to pay for these classes? Dan, are you <laughs> with me right now? <laughs> How much do they cost? Thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars throughout your science, through your Scientology career. It's at this point that Leah decides to pursue a new and more lucrative career than the waitressing and secretarial gigs she'd been holding down, acting. She felt she had a propensity for comedy, which we saw firsthand in our interview. Look at me, I'm Dan, I'm very serious, look at me. As she began the process of auditioning, she says her experience in Scientology played an important role. How helpful was Scientology in terms of getting your acting career started? There's tools that are very, very helpful to you in your life, to you as an actor. You're referring to clear communication, doggedness, persistence. That's what you draw upon. Correct. So I walked into a room where some people might feel, you know, cower in front of a casting director. I wasn't, so... But it didn't come that easily. So when did you get your first big role? How long did that take? Well, an excruciating year. I mean, for most, that's like so crazy. I mean, but for me, it was like, how long does this take, you know? Which was what? Living Dolls. And I thought I had made it. Done. I was like thinking, I'm gonna buy my mother a plane. I like, how do celebrities live? I wanted to buy a house. But the show didn't last. The show didn't last, Dan. Thank you for pointing that out. It oh, got yeah. canceled. Over the ensuing years, Leah did hundreds of auditions, and she landed many small roles along the way. Remember Stacy Carosi on Saved by the Bell? Are you two guys fighting again? It's what we, we do, do best. best. She also got guest roles on huge shows like Cheers. You're pregnant. Carla, that is a rude and unfair thing to say. I am pregnant. And NYPD Blue. What led up to him stabbing you? Okay, see, what led up to it was we had a fight, he took a knife, and he tried to murder me. She also scored some leading roles in a few sitcoms, like Fired Up, and the church was taking notice. Here, Leah is featured on the cover of Scientology's official celebrity magazine. Meanwhile, during this time, a major off-screen development. Leah met the love of her life, a man named Angelo Pagan, who she dubbed the Cuban Frank Sinatra. He just walked in and started singing. And he just caught my attention. I was on stage, and she caught my eye. 
I was like, oh my God, I can't wait till my set is over. Angelo fell so hard for Leah that he not only left his wife, but also dove headlong into Scientology. Has she been into Kabbalah or a Buddhist? I would have done anything. Muslim? Hey, give me the Quran, let's go. Baby, if it's working for you, I'm in. Through Angelo, Leah made some A-list friends, Jennifer Lopez and her then husband, Mark Anthony. And shortly thereafter, Leah got the call that would change her career, an offer to audition for a new show called The King of Queens. Please try being nice to Marie. I am trying. If I weren't trying, she would have a fork sticking out of her neck. The role of Carrie Heffernan, the tough-talking, wise-cracking wife of Kevin James's everyman, Doug. Shut up! Shut up! Turned out to be a sitcom match made in heaven. After years of struggling, the self-described troublemaker from Bensonhurst had finally made it. She had a genuine hit on her hands. We'd be walking down the street and people would stare at her and they'd go, Leah, Leah. You know, it was like, oh my God, people love her.